A while ago, we showed you a completely different clip of these swabs being yeah. made. Remember? Yeah. Remember that one? China right now, it's insane, the amount of testing that is being done in China for COVID. I mean, just in Shanghai alone, you're talking about millions and millions of tests a day. Tens of millions of tests. You know the amount of waste that's happening. Oh it's my insane. Gosh. Can you imagine the oceans right now? I mean, every little test tube, because every single sample, first of all, it's in a plastic sleeve. You've got a swab. That gets tested. It gets put in a little test tube with solution. Then that gets sealed in its own bag. We're talking about huge amounts of plastic waste and all that. But that aside, the, the demand for these things are high, these yeah. little swabs. Because it's now part of everyday life in China. In some places, you have to get tested every day, some places every three days, whatever the case. If you want to travel, if you want to go to the supermarket, you need a test. Yes. So you're getting tested. So the demand for these swabs are massive. So they're just being made, right? Any which way possible. Including, as you can see in this clip behind us, a, newly, a new clip that's just surfaced. Um, just kind of assembled by hand. Now, Without gloves. No gloves, no masks. I mean, the whole point of these things is you're testing right? To mm. see if uh, you have COVID. What if one of these workers has COVID? Or just is contaminating the or swab with any culture. just dirty. Yeah. It's, it's a room full of people that have got no personal protection on them. No. Their hair, saliva, mm. anything can get into these packets. Anything that was on their hands. Hold on. I just want to point out something that we have personal experience with. Mm -hmm. When you think of China... Yeah. And you think of manufacturing in general, oftentimes they'll think of these massive factories. They have like uh, quality control, QC yeah, walking like around. Robots. And robots. Everyone's wearing hair nets and stuff. And you mm. do have that, especially in some of the silicon places. Oh, right? absolutely you do. Now, that being said, while you have factories like that that are making things for export, you also have a huge clandestine uh, workshops, like a, mm. a huge amount of clandestine workshops that are set up in these tiny, crappy little villages. And we can yeah. attest to that because we set up our shop next to a lot of these clandestine factories. What they yeah. do is they actually manufacture things like what you're seeing here. Yes. They might manufacture, uh, remember one was making calculators. Mm -hmm. Uh, or the boards for calculators yeah. in these greasy little shops with no windows, yes. dirt floors, some of them, and a uh, place that was making fake beer. Yeah, the fake beer fake one. Beer. Yeah, they would bring in, mm. they would go and buy all the used bottles from all the barbecue restaurants, yeah. and they would come and they would just basically clean them up, put a fake label on, you know, of Qingdao or whatever, and then put, put in their own homemade concoction that they were making there in that little building. Yeah. And then they would go sell it back to these, uh, you know, barbecue restaurants, restaurants at a massive discount. And we actually mm. drank fake beer a lot. Oh, yeah. You know, what they normally do is they'll bring you real ones in the beginning. And when people start to get a little bit tipsy or drunk, they'll start to bring in the fake ones. Yeah. Because you don't notice it that, that much. Yeah. All sorts of nonsense like this. Now, one might think that this is a little bizarre, okay, right. because we're dealing with medical stuff here. Surely there are quality mm. control checks and stuff. Well, I have a lot of insight into that, actually. Because what happens is in the hospitals, there's a big racket going on where doctors or like the leaders or the manager, so like head doctor of a clinic, for instance, will take a massive kickback in order to sell these counterfeit medicines mm -hmm. and counterfeit things like this, mm -hmm. right? So somebody will approach the head guy and be like, listen, you're getting a budget from your HR or whatever, from your finance department. You get a budget of, let's say, 100,000 RMB to buy these swabs. Well, how about we sell them to you for like 10,000 RMB yeah. and then we'll split the difference or yeah. whatever. So, you know, they it's a big corruption thing. So these things do make it into circulation. And of oh, course, it's very easy to get these, uh, these kind of very badly non-hygienic swabs into circulation and into the population. Yeah, and actually this uh, swab thing without the, you know, the protection and go getting into circulation has actually been happening in Vietnam a lot as well. Mm. And then filtering its way back into China because yeah. of the demand for testing. So yeah. it's getting, it's it's so, the market for these kind of like fake swabs and stuff and this testing stuff mm -hmm. is so large that it's even being exported in sure. nearby countries to satiate the demand within China because of how much testing they need to do. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. And, and again, this is just rife for, well, basically spreading the disease. Yeah. Because what if you, you know, these are contaminated and then they go and test somebody who's not positive and yeah. cause them to become positive? It have positive. to be pretty soon after they package sure. it. But yeah, it's just bad practice in general. Absolutely. And, and I just wanted people to understand that this kind of really half-assed way of doing things is how a lot of products in China are made, especially stuff that you might get from Amazon where it's like, 
you know, kind of like third party off market, like off brand. Mm-hmm. It's like going down the like ladder. Like a cell phone like, charger. Yeah, like a cell phone charger. It's not called like it's not called like Pro Charge anymore, like a Chinese brand or something. It's called like XPQM seven. Yeah. Cool Touch. You know, <laughs> yeah, like, it'll be something like something that. Something crazy. When you get yeah. down to that level, a lot of that's being made in these clandestine factories. Little factories. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, now the next clip we're going to show you just shows you how ridiculous. Um, this whole top-down management system in China is. Yeah. That's the way the government works. This is the way everything works. Now, these testers are given quotas, obviously. Like, mm-hmm. you have to test a certain amount of people. Yeah. Okay? So how China's worked, by the way, since Mao, Mao came up with quotas and he yeah. stole them the idea from the Soviet Union. Of course, like and everything else. It still operates like that today. Yeah. I, I just really get tired of people thinking that China's reformed. Mm. It did experiment with capitalism, but it still works on the quota system. Sure. So here you can see, I'm going to play this clip. This is the testing woman, and what she's doing is she's just testing herself over and over and packaging them so, and then scanning it, you see, over and over and over again in order to meet her quota. So she obviously had to test, I don't know, like uh, people. Six, 600 people that day or whatever, and she didn't meet her sure. target, so she's just filling up the rest um, with her own tests, you know? Yeah. Which is ridiculous. Yeah. And well, this... I mean- <laughs> I mean, th- this is why you cannot trust the numbers coming yeah. out of China. When they like release a GDP number, yeah. when they release the amount of people that were infected by COVID, you can't believe any of it. Oh, this because, will go into official data. Yeah. Everything is just kind of made up on site yeah. and just changed to meet whatever requirements mm. are there. Yeah. And that's why you found when China was reporting such a low amount of infections in the beginning, which of course is impossible, especially mm. given the, the population density in China sure. and the fact that it broke out there in the first place in Wuhan and stuff. What they were doing was, in order to reach the right numbers, so the government's like, hey, you cannot have any infections or you may only have a few. Yeah, You have to have less infections than the USA. Mm. And they're like, okay, how much does the USA have? Okay, they've got like 10,000. Let's make ours about 30 and then what they do is everybody who's infected, instead of writing down COVID as the reason why they're sick, they'll be like, oh, uh, acute pneumonia or, yep. you know, like bad flu or whatever, just to change the numbers. And this is that kind of thing in action. Yeah. You can see it in action right here. I mean, if one got caught on camera, how many times do you think this is actually happening? Yeah. Because you see, each one of those bottles, by the way, has got a, a, a unique barcode on it for whoever's supposed to have been tested. And yeah. I guess they just didn't turn up or whatever the case. So she's like, well, I'm supposed to, I I'm to responsible. Quota, yeah. I have to do this. So she's just testing herself and scanning for each different That's one. the thing is like as much as you can get down on her for that kind of really bullshit attitude of doing this, it's because she's going to get in massive trouble if she doesn't hit that quota. Yeah. It'll be on her head. And that's, a, that's a, actually a great piece of... Um, kind of like evidence of how top-down leadership doesn't work, like you said. Yeah. Because when nobody wants to be held accountable and the next person's head is on the chopping block, no one will actually stand up and say, oh, well, actually, I didn't finish today. Or, yeah. oh, I didn't get it done. Yeah. Right? That's how everything in the government works there. So. <laughs>